to, uh, you know, I'm at a point where, like, I don't want to watch everything. Mm -hmm. And so everything I do want to watch. Like, you're more selective. It's Yeah, because yeah. we're at a point now where, like, time is like everything. Yeah. When we were kids, we could watch anything and just, like, not feel it. You know what I mean? Exactly. Now, if we watch a movie and we hate it, we're like, fuck, I just wasted two hours on that. I just wasted that. two hours and, like, $50 million watching this. <laughs> Seriously. And, uh, yeah, so to me, I'm just a little bit more picky now. Mm -hmm. um, there are some movies that I will get back to, but I just got to be in the right frame of mind. The to, right zone, yeah. It's like watching a Western, you know? Yeah. You just can't watch a Western just for the, for the fuck of it, yeah, you know? Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, so we are back as promised as promised in the new year it's happy new year january tw i keep wanting to say 2018 but no it's january that's gonna happen 20, for the first few months right january 2019 and uh how was your new year um uh, i fell asleep at 11 30 and then i woke up literally two minutes before the the new year so <laughs> that's how my new year was <laughs> exciting it was, yeah it was cool we had like shrimp and champagne and we just stayed home i didn't want to go out so it's like let's just have like a low-key mellow new year's and it was nice how was yours uh i ended up working you had to work so, yeah i was working oh, and uh i worked at a, i work at a hotel and so every uh i don't know how i say this politely douchebag was from, it like crowded coming people? from pacific avenue that oh. checked in and I had parties on all three floors going oh. into, like, late at night. So it was, like, loud and obnoxious. Yeah. Did you have to kick anybody out? Uh, I had to get in a few people's faces, tell them they needed to leave and go to the room. Um, but I didn't get no noise complaints, so there's really mm. nothing I can do. If I don't get a noise complaint, then I really just can't go bang on the door right. and say, hey, you got to keep it down. Yeah, someone you know? has to, like, call it in or something. Yeah, and so I didn't really get any anything because I think a lot of those people were just passed the fuck out, and the yeah. people that were up were just on uppers. So. Yeah, right, <laughs> or drinking and, yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, my New Year's was like, uh Yeah. But it's always like that, though, because I'm, I'm usually working on the holidays, so. To me, it, it's like same shit, different day, really. Same shit, different day. Just another day. Yeah, so that was my New Year's. <laughs> and uh, let's see. What do you expect from this show? What are your expectations for this show going like, through the New Year? Me? Yeah. Personally? Oh, um, I mean, I expect it to be great. I want it to be great. I want it to be entertaining. I want to cover topics that not other podcasts cover i want us to kind of like stand out and get more followers mm -hmm. that's that's my expectations that's your expectation yeah well you need to lower the bar <laughs> oh wow <laughs> <laughs> no <Shit. laughs> it's uh no, i agree i think uh for me i i would like to have uh panels on here yeah and other too. guests i think uh, having uh, a third or a fourth person in the room mm -hmm. and getting their opinion because not all of us share the same opinion about right. certain movies. So I'm, I'm very curious about how the, those dynamics will play in, into the podcast and mm -hmm. make it more entertaining. And, uh, I really am curious to, um, see, damn, I, tr I had a train of thought. Sorry. I was up all night <laughs> and I was watching wrestling until like five in the morning. So who watches wrestling till five in the morning? I do. <laughs> On like what channel do they even show wrestling on anymore? It's um, it's a uh, Japanese wrestling, and so it's in <laughs> Japan, so it airs. Wow. So I think it's eight o'clock over there, and it's midnight oh, over here. Oh, because of time, yeah. Yeah, and so I <laughs> stayed up to midnight to like four a.m. Is it I'm, like sumo wrestlers or what? No, it's actually like, like wrestling, like WWE style. Huh. So I was up to like five, and then I watched Parks and Rec for like an hour, and then I went to sleep, and then I got up and like. Fuck, <laughs> I overslept. But yeah, so I'm kind of groggy right now. But I need my coffee, so I'm gonna or take, your, yeah. take a sip. So take it away, real quick. So yeah, uh, I'm still kind of in like the holiday hang, not a hangover. I mean, I don't want to say like hangover, but you know the haze of the holidays and trying to get like back to that schedule, back to like finding new films that's like kind of what i've been doing and i watched you didn't want to cover it but i watched netflix bandersnatch 
Yeah. And I thought that was such an interesting concept. So, okay. Well, it's not that I didn't want to cover it. I just I wasn't in the mood to watch you it. You have to be in the mood. And you can't read. So if something happened, so this is what happened to me. My internet kept caving out. Like I don't know what was going on, but it was my internet was like really shitty. So the way it looks is when you're watching it on the bottom, it'll pop up two questions. Mm-hmm. And like the first one, it's just, it's a dumb one. It's like, what cereal should he eat? And you'll say, oh, sugar puffs or like the other one. So it starts very like mild that way. And then it goes into the different paths. So my internet kept caving out and you can't go from where you just left off. You have to restart the whole movie and restart your paths. So I had to do it like five times. And then I got so <laughs> close to the ending where they like, like super close to the ending, and then it just caved out. I'm like, I don't want to restart all this all over again, because he realizes he's being controlled by you. Yeah, it's really cool actually. And then, and then at the end, I made like a joke. I wrote it on the the horror group we're on, and I was like, you know, I didn't want to restart my paths again, and I just got to the point where he figured it out. But was this the point of the show? Was I controlling him or was Netflix controlling me? Because it was just like I couldn't I couldn't win. Like I I don't know, but I really like that concept and I wish it wasn't horror. It was definitely like sci fi drama thriller. Very eighties, very cool, really cool music and stuff. But I wish they would do that for horror films. Like I think that would be a really cool way to go. Um, so I'm interested. Should like, she pick up the axe or drive it in the car? Right. <laughs> Make it more fun than that, though. She but, should. Should she hide under the bed or in the closet? <laughs> but how fun! It's like a video game, right? It's like a video yeah. game and a movie in one. And I, I don't know. I just think that was such a cool concept. But I don't know what my ending would have been. Would have been. So I'm like, not, you didn't even finish it? <laughs> no, because I didn't want to. Re- I was in like over an hour. Like I was How super close to the ending, probably like an hour and a half, an hour twenty minutes. Wow. I was so close to that ending, and then I was like, "I'm not." Realistically, that's probably like two hours right there. Yeah. So, but yeah, that so that was fun. I, was, I was reading on that uh, on your status. I was reading the thread, and some mm-hmm. of them were saying, you know, I ended up with like a rainbow screen online. What? Yeah. yeah so, like weird. <clears throat> it was the I guess like if you pick certain paths or something yeah. like that. Like you, it ends on uh, on something that's pretty crazy, like a commercial or like a rainbow, like the rainbow screen. Like, oh, how Ehh. weird! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um, I don't know if the dude was joking or not, but yeah, I'm kind of no, I'm kind of curious to check it out too. But again, it's like you gotta have good internet and you gotta be in the mood to watch it. Yeah, and uh, you can't just where keep I live, it. I don't have good internet, so. You're fucked. <laughs> So That's I, your path. Is yeah, you can't watch it. You can't watch. It. I'm gonna get to up to the serial part and then. Nope. And then have to yeah redo it. But no, it was cool. It's definitely entertaining. I just wish I could have know what my result was. But yeah. So when while you were doing that, I was I was actually uh, watching a Shutter original or a Shutter exclusive called Satan Slaves. Nice. I want to watch that. And holy shit, this fucking movie is awesome. Is that from, uh, what country is that from? It's a Indonesian. It's an Indonesian Indonesian? film. Oh, okay. And um, so the story follows a singer who happens to be sick. And, you know, in the very very first 10 minutes, she passes away. And the kids and the dad, they're like, they're left in a, they're left in a bad financial position. They're about to lose their house to the bank. Mm -hmm. And the dad goes away to work to, to get money and then to keep their house essentially. But while the dad leaves, weird shit starts happening. Hmm. Like Like, in the house? Yeah, in the house. Like all of a sudden, like, you know. Uh, you start hearing the the bell because the the mom had a bell, mm-hmm. so every time she needed something, she would ring the bell. Oh, that's creepy. And so you would hear the bell faintly, and the kids would be like, "What the fuck?" But then, uh, there and then they have like two younger siblings, mm-hmm. and this is fucking great because uh, there's a portrait at the end of a hallway, right? And it's pretty scary, and it's a portrait of their mother. Oh. And um, she's like. The way she's positioned, it looks like she's like staring right at you, right? Oh, man. So it's like one it's of like those the nun. <laughs> yeah, it's like one of those portraits yeah. where you can honestly feel like their their eyes are following moving, you. Yeah. And so like the younger brother is like said, No, like she's scary. Like yeah. cover her up. Right? So the the middle brother grabs the blanket and they walk up and then they throw the sheet <laughs> to cover it. Yeah. 
it misses and then it outlines a human body. Ew, that's creepy. And then he, and then like the the little brother the whole entire time just has his eyes covered. He doesn't want to look cuz like he's so scared by that picture. Yeah. And the other brother's like uh and he tries to touch it and then ah! Were they scared of their mom when she was alive? Well, she was sick, so oh. um when so they didn't really get a chance to meet their mom. If oh. that makes sense. Because okay. she was, the, like, bedridden. Yeah, she were... was bedridden. So the only memory they had of their mother was her bedridden and being oh. sick. And so that was one of the things. It was, mm-hmm. like, so. And it's very, they made a point, too, where, like, the the older sister who takes care of the brother, mm-hmm. she tells the little brother, like, go help your, go help mom. You yeah. know? It's like, I don't want to. You know, it, it's scary up there. And it that kind of plants the seed on how the how the two younger siblings right. view their mother, you know, right. and then but it comes out though that uh, she was barren oh. and she couldn't have children. So were they not her kids? Yeah. Oh shit. And so it, it comes out later that she made a deal, mm-hmm. and now she has to pay up that deal. Oh, okay. Is this like a horror movie where there's a lot of dialogue? Or yes, there I know so that, how much I know. Hard... I know how much you hate dialogue. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> the only thing is, it's because it's in subtitle, right? That's my only thing. Is it's hard to watch if it's so dialogue heavy and it's subtitled at the same time. It's really but hard the to set watch. pieces on her though, like mm-hmm. that they have in there, are are really worth it. And then when you get okay. to the end, it's it boom, okay. it's great. Yeah, I want to because I've been hearing good things about that. I want to check that out. Um, it is a sequel. It, it's actually like a sequel, a prequel. Oh. To uh, the same movie that was released in 1981. Oh, okay. So I had to look it up too because um, there's two characters at the end of the movie where you're like, what? Mm-hmm. And then when you read about it, you're like, oh, oh so God, this sense. movie leads up to. The 1980 movie was the 81 an Indonesian one yeah. as well. Oh, okay. And so they, oh, uh, you can't find that movie anywhere. I, I look. That sucks. And I'm like, maybe Dude. they will because if this is getting like a good amount yeah. of people. Hopefully, might... hopefully, Shutter will like you know, yeah, like we'll get that, get the rights to air that because I want to see see that. Yeah. Like, holy shit! Like, how does this story go? You know, is what there I mean? a trailer for the original one? Yeah, I think there is. Oh, okay. there, there is a trailer, and it's just like really like grainy oh <laughs> but you know it adds to the charm because you you can tell someone ripped that shit off their vcr <laughs> yeah right <laughs> all fuzzy <laughs> yeah so that was that's how i kicked off my new year's by watching that nice and so our topic today was going to be horror comedies mm-hmm. but we decided to push that back uh due to scheduling um instead we are doing a movie review on the clove hitch killer so good and I have to praise Elisa for this for bringing this movie to my attention. Wow! Finally, I get a, uh, a hey, compliment hey, hey, and hey. acknowledgement. Wow! Hey, don't don't ruin moments. What's I'm wrong with gloat. you? <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I would have to say this is a really good movie. I, I had, loved this movie. I thought this was a really good movie. And uh, what's his name? Dylan McDermott. Dylan McDermott. Yep. Man, that motherfucker was like. Yeah, he you know, he had a really good performance in this movie. Yes, he did. And so for all you guys that know Dylan McDermott, he's like a really hot guy, right? Like he was so popular like in the 90s and the 2000s. American what sitcom was he in? The Practice. Wasn't he in a sitcom too? He's been in like a bunch. He was in The Practice. American uh, Horror, Horror Story, Story yeah. kind of brought him back. But he's been in like so many movies and sitcoms and shows. But he was like known for like The Practice. So to see him do this role and to look how they made him, I don't know. Like, it's worth it just for that. Like, to me, he kills it in this movie, literally. Um, and Charlie Plummer, who plays his son, I really like, too. I think he's, like, a the next, like, up-and-coming actor. He's been in movies, a couple movies that have gotten some good... Um, feedback like lean on pete which is i I haven't seen that oh okay that was Um, him that was him all the money in the world he plays the the kidnapped son oh Uh, really what's his name john i I know you're john John getty or whatever his name yeah getty um so he's been in like a bunch of stuff but he was really good in this um but yeah so i 
saw this movie a couple months ago, so it's not super fresh in my mind, but it just it just stood out to me. And I would say it's probably like in my top 10 of last year, um, just because it's we haven't had like a serial killer movie in quite a while. Mm-hmm. Um, so this like it was kind of under the radar. You didn't really hear about this movie that much. No, this movie did a lot of festival runs and yeah. it premiered, uh, I think, at uh, some festival down in the south. Mm hmm. Uh, and it, you know, got like really good praise. And then I think, I think it did one more festival run and then it, all of a sudden it just ended up on VOD, yeah. which is a shame too, because I was kind of hoping that this got like a limited release. I know. I, um, they said that this was released in theaters in October, mm-hmm. but the theater that I usually frequent, like the OCO, it wasn't playing there. They didn't have it there. Yeah. It's probably, you know, it's probably like one of those things where it's like LA, New York, yeah, or, like like the big market. Yeah, that's what happens with these kind. But yeah, I, so I rented this on Amazon, um, and I'm just glad I did because I, yeah. Well, we'll get into it, but I just think like I would say for sure this was like in my top ten of last year, 2018. Yeah, had I seen this uh, before I uh, made my top ten, this just probably would have snuck in there. Yeah. Um. So I watched this last night. So it's still fresh in your mind. Yeah, I watched this last night, and uh, I remember thinking shit this is a good movie and it delivered on its premise about the kid investigating yeah uh a serial killer and i was thinking what other movie did that Mm -hmm. and i saw it this year uh oh yeah summer of 84 summer of 84 yeah and and i feel like summer of 84 despite all its flaws like the clove hitch killer that's what the summer of 84 should have been yeah that's how it should have been structured i think summer of 84 it really played on that nostalgic factor this one it doesn't have that it's very like suburban christian family it's not really like a decade or time piece it's just kind of current i think i mean i, I did research it's, it's modernized for sure yeah i did research because i was like was this based off someone and the director didn't want to name names but he goes if you research and like i'll give you clues so this was based off dennis Rader, the btk killer yeah so um it's very like yeah like i don't even know what town this takes place in but it feels very Kentucky. Mid- okay it feels very like midwest but um yeah, so Summer of I, I would pair it with that. I think those would be a good double feature. But Summer of 84, it is like young teens investigating, but they were way m- Im- more immature than what Charlie Plummer was in this movie. He was very mature for his age. Mm-hmm. And I think because he's an Eagle Scout or a Boy Scout, he, you know, his family's like very religious uh, Christian and he's like a good boy, does everything with his dad. So he's like really mature. Um, so it does kind of have like that adult feel where Summer of 84 kind of feels a little more kitty, if you know what I yeah. mean. But definitely the whole like investigation of a serial killer in their area, I would say like that pair as well. And there was another movie called, oh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Is it Acolytes? 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 Acolytes. Is that how you say it? It had know. Joel Egerton. This was like 2008. Uh, it was an Australian independent film. It's like A C O. L E T S or I'm totally butchering it. I think it's Al Al but that had a very similar feel too, where they try to uh, they kill a bully. It's teenagers and they kill a bully and they try to frame a serial killer to help them to get rid of the body. Um, and it kind of has like that same tone. Have you seen it? I. Uh, this was like before Joel Egerton he, was before famous. Before he was, yeah, yeah, and he was good in that. He played a really good role. Hold on. How, what year was it? 2008, I want to say. It was 2008? Yeah. Acolytes. Acolytes, okay. I can never pronounce it. <laughs> but that had a very... It had like that same tone. Where it's teenagers, but there is kind of more of a mature content behind it. It's mm-hmm. not so like jokes or humor. Because the jokes in Clove Hitch, they were actor choices. They weren't like, I'm going to tell you a joke. Like, I was, yeah. I found this movie fucking I, hilarious. I, I honestly <laughs> thought like a lot of the stuff on there too, like you know, a lot of the the, the humor. Yeah. It came from it came from real life, but right. it also came from the character's perspective. Exactly. And you know, one point that I was going to make in our other topic is that 
Um, you know how certain horror comedies have like that one character that's always like throwing out zingers. Yeah. Even inappropriate times and it's always like, you know, it's like jarring at moments. Right. But there are some movies where you have a character that that's just that just doesn't care, right? right. That doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. And still makes like a joke mm-hmm. or says something funny. Yeah. But it's not intentional. It's just something like It just comes across that way. Yeah. And, yeah. and I feel like to me, that's how all these characters handle certain situations, and I feel yeah. like those were all character choices, because I think uh, there's this one scene, like in the first few minutes, where um, Charlie Plummer's talking to his friend, mm-hmm. and he's saying, um, "She's not, she's not Kristen. She's sick." Oh yeah. And to me, I thought that was fucking hilarious, yeah. because to me, I was like. Man, you're supposed to be like this Christian dude, and you're right? s- standing over there judging another person. <laughs> exactly, you know the hypocrisy of it all. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed this movie. I thought um the the kid was good. Mm-hmm. The girl was a scene stealer. She was really good. She was a I fucking scene. I haven't seen her in anything else. Uh, she was been. I looked her up. She was in a lot of shorts, and she was also in. Uh, she has another movie coming out. God mm. damn it can't remember yeah she i really liked her she i feel like she could be like the next up-and-coming young actress too yeah she and you know what i liked about her character is that her character had not only an emotional tie-in to the the story Mm -hmm. but she wasn't fucking useless she was like helping him she wanted to investigate she was the one that kind of like pushed him and said look you need to look at this yeah you know um We'll we'll get into spoilers in a little bit, but, you know, overall, I thought this was a really solid movie from start to finish. Mm -hmm. There is an interesting um, choice toward the end where you uh, switch perspectives. Yeah. And I'm like... That kind of... So, I don't know if we want to get into, like, the plot and the the synopsis of it. Okay, so get into the synopsis because I'm going to look this up real quick. So, this, like I said earlier, this is, like, a Christian family and uh, you know i want to say eagle scout or boy scout but eagle it might scout. Be, is it an eagle scout eagle okay scout. so it's like a 16 year old i think he's 16 um and his dad is like the leader of the eagle scouts and his dad is also like the local handyman so it's like you know you think it's like your normal average suburban family all to do well but there is a uh a serial killer and that's the thing is they don't really get into that, but you just kind of know that there's... It's in the background. It's in the background. Because the yeah. way they open this movie is that um, it's an... Um, he, uh, the kid narrates it and says, mm-hmm. you know, for the past 10 years we had um, like this, this service for the people that have been fallen from the clo- clove hitch killer. Yeah. And we raised the flags for them, stuff like that. And, and to me, that's like in the background, right? Yeah. That's supposed to be... It's like on the side burner. Yeah, you know? but it doesn't come to the main front where he's trying to uh, get laid in the truck. Right. And the girl picks up a, a piece Polaroid. Of, yeah, no, it's a piece of paper. I think it's a it's ripped from magazine. Oh, that's right. The Polaroid comes later. Sorry. Yeah, the Polaroid comes later. Yeah. And so she opens it and she sees it's a woman being bound and gagged. Yeah. Tied and up. she's all freaked out, like. Uh, thinking like what are you into you into some weird stuff but it's his dad's truck yeah right so he you but know, he, she doesn't know that she doesn't know that but this whole time you know he's thinking like his dad is just like boring and like nerdy and like an all you know just just you know like making fun of dads so he sees it and that's kind of like what sets it off like he kind of starts to suspect something like what is my dad into you know mm-hmm. but then meanwhile this girl thinks it's him that's into like weird shit and like spreads rumors the about one him at thing school. i do wish they kind of um they they kind not focused more on because mm-hmm. i think it would have taken away from the movie but kind of played with was the fact that um how everyone in his age group yeah knew about that mm-hmm. about him you know like yeah. you know that because because there's also a sequence where his friends are calling him a perv and mm-hmm. everyone just wants to stay away from him mm-hmm. i, I kind of wish they would have played with that a little bit more yeah like maybe bullied him or tortured yeah. him or something like that yeah because then that would give more of an emotional you well, feel even it, worse for him I think. yeah because then it would have added more um not debt, but more stakes. Yeah. Because then it's like, shit, not only is he fighting for, you know, literally fighting for his life, but he's yeah. also going to try to fight for his name. Yeah. And I thought that was interesting, too, because that was a tie-in toward the end where 
there's a decision made. Oh. And it's like, now you're thinking, was that the right decision? Yeah. Yeah, but so it's interesting. So he then starts to think, okay, my dad maybe isn't normal and has like a weird side. You know, he gets kind of suspicious, but he's very quiet about everything. And then he finds like more things about his dad. Like, why does he have a padlock or some kind of like lock on a shed? He breaks in. He then finds the Polaroid of a woman. And what was her name? Nora? Nora. It says Nora. And she's like bound and gagged, looking miserable. Like, is she dead or is she alive in that photo? I don't know. And then he finds kind of other stuff, but it's like buried under this like, um, was it? It's like a hidden floor. It's like a floor. Is it a floorboard? Yeah, it's a floorboard. Yeah. So he finds it there. Then he gets really suspicious. Um, So he kind of starts to you know, he doesn't really tell anyone about it straight away, but then he meets that girl and she like hangs outside the church. She never goes in the church, but she's always like there. And then they kind of like form a friendship. And, and then, the, the the whole thing too, at the beginning, it's like, oh yeah, she, she looks up, she uh, researches serial mm-hmm. killers. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why it's like a lot of people kind of shun her because they think she's weird. Like she's a freak. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another thing, is that after he finds a Polaroid, he goes to the laptop and uh-huh. looks it up. Yeah, and then that's when they f- he f- his figures mom out. <laughs> catches him. Yeah, and I'm like, dude, at least clear the history. I know, because <laughs> then like later on, you know, his dad comes in and they have the the talk. Yeah, and it's like, come on, man, I like know. I, it's it's just fantasy. Yeah, it's it's fantasy. It's it's not real. I know. I know what you're into. It's okay, but no pictures. Right. And it's like, what are you trying to say? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the weirdest talk I ever heard. Yeah. Then he, then the dad, you, you, at that point, he's just you think he's weird now. Like he's all he's a little loony. He's a little out there. Um, but yeah. So then the girl and him form a friendship, and they kind of like he. I don't remember if he admits to her he thinks it's her, his dad. Not till dinner. Okay, that's right, dinner. So then, yeah, then he start they start to like kind of follow his dad, and um, and then his dad like does random things with him, like takes him camping, but he's kind of scared to be mm-hmm. camping with him, and he's like talking to him, and um, so then you think like okay, the tone is kind of changing, like. Is it the dad? Is it not the dad? Is the dad going to kill him? Like, you kind of, like, have all these, like, suspicions going on. And then you start to see the dad follow a woman. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a grocery well, store. Well, here's, here's another important part, plot point, though, too. That, so, while taking him camping, he puts it on his brother, Uncle oh, Rudy. Yeah, Uncle Rudy. <laughs> who is catatonic and yeah. confined to a wheelchair throughout the whole movie. Yeah. But the thing is, is that you don't see Uncle Rudy throughout the whole entire movie. No, not till later. Yeah. And it's like, he lives in the house with them. Mm-hmm. How come we don't see Uncle Rudy enough? Yeah, that was one thing I, I wish they did show. Was you know, like, like at I, least to get that like relationship established. But, you know. Because Uncle Rudy is live with them. They're picking him up yeah. to live with them because they can't afford it anymore. Right. And so... Like, throughout the whole entire movie, he is not there. Mm -hmm. I mean, when he goes to church, you see Uncle Rudy there, Mm -hmm. but then... Where Where is he? (laughs) Where is he? Yeah. Where'd he go? Did they put him back in the home? Right. Because when they picked him up from the home, I thought it was because they were going to live with him. Yeah. You know, so he tells his son that Uncle Rudy did it. Mm -hmm. I found out. I tried to do what I had to do. Yeah. I did it. I didn't say anything because I wanted to protect my family. Right. So then he, the son feels like bad, kind of. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. And then they burn all the evidence. All the evidence that is really the dad's. Spoiler alert. But they burn everything. So the kid has like nothing to go off on to prove anything. Right? Yeah. So this is when, you know, they still kind of feel not right about it. And they do follow the dad again. And... Then they follow him to this one house where there's like that knot. There's the clove hitch knot. Yeah. And you see the dad like following this woman. I think it was a grocery store parking lot, I want to say. Um, 
Yeah, and then this is like when this. So this is where my favorite scenes like start to happen. So spoiler alert, it is the dab, and <laughs> what? okay, no, I'm just cracking up because so he gets like his um, he the woman that he's following. He marks that that's the house. This is gonna be my, this is gonna be my next victim, right? He has the clove hitch thing outside. He finds a way. He investigates her house, looks for a way to break in. So he goes through like the basement window, yeah. Like the tiny, it's tiny, tiny window. He goes in and he's like making sounds, like oh, like he's old, right? Yeah. He's not a young guy. He's not in like super, super great shape. So you see him like struggle with his back a little bit, and then he like is in her house. Then he puts on his like little uh, ski, ski mask. mask thing and like his little outfit, and. He's just like in her living room and she's sleeping on the couch, not knowing what's like happening or anything. And then she like wakes up and then he makes her. I don't know, like he's talking to her, he's having dialogue with her and he's lying to her. It kind of reminded me of the Zodiac. Like, yeah. oh, I just, what does he say? I robbed a bank. Yeah, I just robbed a bank. I just robbed a bank and now I'm heading to wherever. It's very similar to like the Zodiac. And then he makes her get her purse and he wants like her id and all this stuff and then he's kind of like yelling at her like can you get it like my back is acting up as is and i at this point i was dying i was freaking cracking up because i am a person with back issues and i just thought it was hilarious um so it's kind of comical like it's not meant to be funny at all but if you have that like dark sense of humor you could see the humor in it you could yeah. see the humor in it and i was just dying of laughter like i couldn't stop laughing um, and then he makes her tie herself up. Like, he's just making her do everything. And he's like, no, that's not how you it's do it. It's not tight enough. Yeah, that's not how you do it. So they're in, like, the bedroom. And this is kind of where it takes a different tone. Um, it did kind of lose me a little bit after this because, like you said before, it does change perspective. Okay, so when it changes perspectives, like, um, I see that some people have, like, uh, kind of, like, I think that was the killer for them. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that if you really think about it, and one of the critique is, is that when they change perspectives, like you're with this character throughout the whole entire movie, yeah. and yet it changes. Right. But the, the the fact of the matter is, is that we're both we're with both these characters both the, the throughout the, the whole movie. Yeah. So in the change of perspectives doesn't necessarily bug me as much yeah. i think it's more of the reveal because then when you see because there's a sequence like when he bounds her and gags her yeah. with the with the grocery bag uh -huh. then you see someone like in the door with a gun yeah i'm yeah. like i'm thinking oh shit that's her son right you know what i mean it's like this guy's honestly because i thought that's where they're gonna go i thought her son like the the girl that was bound yeah like, or like her husband or something yeah yeah came home and mm -hmm. then was gonna shoot him mm -hmm. and then then it, it comes out yeah you know what i mean to me i thought that's how they were gonna end it, it was like it comes yeah. out like oh shit like he, he's gonna be caught now you yeah. know but it's his son that has the gun yeah it's the son and then then it flips and then we go back it goes to, back to and that and I, at that point i was like was there something wrong with my um my rental like <laughs> did something happen but no it was like you know in freddy 4 when she keeps dreaming and yeah it's, it's a and loop at that part i was like is there something wrong with my vhs but no so it kind of has that so don't let that throw you off but um it did th that part i would say did throw me off a little bit i don't hate it i think it's i think it's in i think it's an interesting story choice yeah because you're trying to tell a story from two different perspectives right and that's i think that's what they're what they i think that was their intention and i just feel intent, like it yeah. wasn't i don't want to say executed well mm -hmm. enough but i just feel like it was just kind of placed at the wrong the place. wrong time or something yeah because you open up with a narrator and yet you the narrator never shows up again yeah and i always find that i always find that difficult too in, in movies that when you have a narrator the whole point is having a narrator right. is that you have him narrate the whole thing yeah. and see him. And then or... and that way it sets up mm -hmm. your, your change of perspective. Right. Yeah. So it did, it did throw me off a little bit, but then, so then it goes back to them making a plan. They cut him and the girl, they come up with a plan to like catch his dad or to get his dad. Um, and then I don't know if this is maybe I skipped it. I don't know if this is where it gets into the dad or might have been before, but the dad dresses up uh, yeah. as a woman. Okay, so oh, right, oh my God. right when uh, he changes 
uh, he burns all the evidence, right? Yeah. He burns all of it, and the son's all, okay. Yeah. We're done, right? <laughs> That's it. And so the girl comes back and says, hey, look, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. but we need to talk. So she meets her. He meets her mm-hmm. at one of the victim's houses. Yeah. And she comes up and tells him the story about how her mother died mm-hmm. by clove hitch. And she. That's why it's so important to Yeah, her. and he names her. Mm-hmm. And he's like, is it Crystal Harper? And right then and there, yeah. it's like, it's apparent. They're like, fuck. Yeah. He really did do it. Mm-hmm. I think the whole entire time, like, while he was burning, I think he was in denial. Yeah, I because- did too. Because you can kind of. You get that vibe, you know, while watching him and like, kind of like, is this really what we should be? You're thinking like, is this really what I should be doing? Yeah. You know? And I think, and I think there's just like this denial that, you know, his dad made a parent is like, you know, if it comes out. Yeah. It's going to hurt your mother and your little sister. Yeah. It's going to hurt the family. He's so, it's so fucked up to do to your son. Like he's such a sociopath. Yeah. And know? so like he puts this whole weight on him it's and it's like, burden. you know what? You do this. Mm-hmm. You're going to destroy our family. Yeah. And this is all going to be your fault. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like that was, I think that's what played into it. But it wasn't until like he realized that um, she had her own family mm-hmm. destroyed by this. And so he's like, fuck it. I got to do it. Yeah. So that's like what changes his mind to keep like no like let's let's do it. Yeah. You know? So and there's another thing is like they break into their own house. He installs a tracking device on his dad's phone. Yeah. And then, but we see the dad <laughs> dressed in drag, wearing oh a mask. So hilarious. And the thing about that too is like when he was doing all that, mm-hmm. he was replicating all of his murders. Yeah. And so, because he, he burnt all his Polaroids, he burnt yeah. all of that stuff. So he, he, and didn't that have, was, he didn't have that stuff Yeah, anymore. and then he couldn't get off. And, and I think that was because he tries to make love to his wife yeah. right after that. Mm-hmm. And he couldn't finish the job. Yeah. And it's like, and she asks him, you okay? Like, mm-hmm. it's fine. And I think what it was is that all of his tools were were gone and yeah. then he can't get them back. Mm-hmm. And so when he was replicating all that stuff and then he looks at him and when he's finished and then he takes a picture of uh, Casey, that's her name, Casey. Oh yeah. And he takes a picture of her and he looks at her as like, and he looks at all of them and he just throws them and he starts fucking going cold Turkey on yeah. the bed. He's like, fuck. Yeah. And to me, I thought that was, that was like a brilliant part because that shows the trophies how much they meant to him mm-hmm. you know not only uh emotionally but you know sexually yeah as well and, and a lot of real serial killers do that they keep stuff from their victims yeah you know which is a big mistake because there's evidence but um they do that because it's like a weird sexual thing but it's like a thrill it's like you're reliving yeah, the moment exactly and so he can't relive those moments because like he knows like oh that's me in that dress yeah. and that's and i feel that was the, the thing that broke him mm-hmm. that made him go do that not to give an excuse but right but that was the reason he went out and did it yeah and so when the kid catches him <laughs> he like the dad doesn't see him though he's no. like being sneaky and so when when they catch him mm-hmm. And he points the gun at him, and the dad's all, what I teach you, bud, you never point a gun unless you intend to use it. But before that, isn't that where, like, one of my favorite lines is, your mom and I are just a little kinky, that's all. Isn't that what he said? Oh, but that yeah, part, yeah. I was dying when he said that. So, We're just a little kinky, that's all. It's all like, yeah, me and this woman have an affair. Your wife, my wife, your mom knows all about it. Yeah. We're just kinky, that's all. We're good. <laughs> So he's still, like, being a freaking sociopath at that moment, you know? Like, just lying his kid, but, like, the way he... I don't know, like, he deserves an award for this movie because he just plays it off so well, you know? But then, yeah, the gun thing... And then uh, Casey tries to run because the dad carried a handgun into Mm -hmm. the house. She tries to run, and then he grabs her and smashes her into the wall, and he's all... Sorry, I didn't mean to hurt anyone. I <laughs> yeah. never hurt anyone. Yeah. But she was going to hurt us. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we know about gun safety. She doesn't. Because <laughs> okay? we're Eagle Scouts. You know, I taught you about how to hold a gun, okay? And he empties the gun. Yeah. And he's like, point, just put it down mm-hmm. and we can talk. Okay, so this is one thing that kind of got me, though. 
So when he, so the son, I don't know. The son hands over the gun. Okay, he hands over the gun. Which is so stupid. I was like, what are you doing? And he's like, no, man, just disappointed. And I already knew he was going to fucking shoot him. But that's fucked up. I knew he was going to shoot him because. So the dad now has the gun and he pulls the trigger. Pulls but the trigger, there's nothing. but it, there's nothing. It's but empty. that part, you see the kid's face, like his son, like, whoa, like he was just going to, he was going to fucking kill me. Yeah. That's so messed up. And to me, know? so let me ask you a question. Did he forget to load it or was it unloaded already? I don't know. I'm not, I don't know. Maybe it was unloaded. Because to me, like he's, so it's established that he's a gun expert. Maybe he didn't want to load it and was just trying to scare his dad and make him stop, but didn't really want to shoot him. That's kind of how I took it, you know? Like that's why there's no bullets in it. Right? Yeah. I mean, because any gun, gun owner would know that you would never keep well, you would keep the gun and the bullets in two different places. Yeah, you never just keep be- the gun loaded. Because, you know, for safety. Especially if you yeah. have children in the house, yeah. you need to keep it unloaded. Yeah. And Or maybe he thought there were but bullets then when in you, there. But then when check. you but then when he goes to get the gun, he opens he just opens a cabinet oh. and picks up the rifle. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe he thought maybe he was you know, he's probably nervous too. So to me, yeah. uh, to me that wasn't clear. I think I think he thought it was loaded. Yeah, it could have been. Because right when he pulled the trigger, he had this look on his eyes like, and then he, then he like, you know, jumped. Then, then they got into a tussle and then, you know, the dad was going to strangle him with the gun and then Casey comes in with the lamp. Boom. Boom. Yeah. And then this this whole time this is happening, that woman is still tied up and like screaming. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But she doesn't die. But, yeah, I thought that part was really good, but, like, fucked up. Like, wow, he would have so killed his own son, you know? Not only that, but, you know, what, what, think about what he would have done to Casey. And to Kate, yeah, he would have done who God knows what. But um, that was a great scene. I, I really liked that scene. But then, so it takes another weird turn where they don't show them dragging him, but apparently they make it look like a suicide, like the dad killed him. No, they're showing him dragging him. But they, not at that point, because then the mom is back. Well, no, because then what they do is like Casey's gonna die nine one one. Yeah. And he's he's all no, he's like, don't, don't, yeah, don't do it. And then it cuts to like a missing. Right. You don't know how long it's been, mm-hmm. so probably could have been a couple of days, a month, whatever. And then you see the effects that it has on the mom and the sister. Mm-hmm. By not having uh, the, the dad, dad there no more. Mm-hmm. She's like, you know, the sister's like, I want pancakes. Well, guess what? No pancakes. Yeah. Everything's just like. You know, now she's got to now she's got to go full time. Yeah. And, you know, now uh, the son has to take care of the daughter. Mm-hmm. And so everything's just all out of order. And then when he gets anointed as Eagle Master, mm-hmm. um, there's a picture of his dad up there. Yeah. With the glasses. <laughs> yeah, and so he... Now, this is the point where I thought he was going to say something about his dad, about being Clove Hitch. Clove Hitch, yeah, I did see I, I honestly thought, like, oh, shit. This like, is the a, secret's out now. Yeah, I thought this know? was going to be awkward as fuck. But yeah. no, he... It's like, it's more of kept, like a remembrance of my dad, yeah. you know. And then, then you're like, what? He wanted to remember him as the de- uh, as his father, not as the serial killer. And then as as how other people looked at him yeah. as well. Yeah. And But then it's revealed that uh, Casey and Tyler killed him. Yeah. But they don't show that, you know. And then I, because like, I have a lot of questions at that point too. Like, what happened to the woman that was tied up in the house? Did she not see their faces? Did like she agree not to say anything? There was kind of that part was kind yeah. of unanswered for me. And then how did they drag? Maybe him? that's why they wanted to talk to him because because later on you see uh, the cops. Mm-hmm. Well, you don't see the cops, but the mother comes into Tyler and comes in Tyler's room and says the cops wanted to talk to yeah. you. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And but then she's all no. But it wasn't really clear what they wanted to talk to him about. Yeah. She, never, she was never really clear about that. And I think that was supposed to be, like, a mystery, like, did, like at this part. Because like, we don't know, right? We don't mm-hmm. know if, like, he killed him yet. But um, but they take him out, I guess, like, where they camped, where he originally took Tyler to camp. And then 
they make it look I, they don't show it but they you assume like it's a they make it look like a suicide mm-hmm. but yeah so that part there's kind of some things like i thought they could have done a little bit better to make it more you know like my unanswered questions but um but yeah so no then you no one knows still who you Cole know Kitch is. what what i would have like preferred like when they um captured him and they took him to the the campsite. Mm-hmm. What I would have preferred is if Tyler would have flipped the tables mm-hmm. on his dad and said, you know, you need to do this because, you know, you need to say the family name. Yeah. Like we caught you, so you know, by using, by using that guilt on him mm-hmm. in order for him to kill himself. You know, it would have been interesting too. Just like total like boop. Uh, what if like they made Tyler involved in it? And they become like a son and dad team, and Tyler like gets into it. That would have been kind of cool, mm. you know. No, because no? Tyler Tyler's already set up as someone that that has a conscience. From the very moment we see him, he yeah he steals the truck and all, but he he steals his dad's truck is what I'm, what I'm saying yeah. in the beginning. But he's set up as someone that has a conscience, and so you really couldn't do that. Because- well, they would have had to add something like a, like a weird scene, like maybe he like jacks off to the tied up girl or something. Uh, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, it, no, I'm a, just saying like that would have been moment, interesting. Yeah, like a little moment like that. Yeah, yeah I, I could totally see. You know, if they would have done that, then yeah. But overall, like I really, even though there was some like unanswered questions, I really still enjoyed this movie, and it's definitely a movie I'd watch again. And if you like serial killer movies, if you like kind of that dark humor that's not meant to be funny, but it is hilarious, I really recommend this movie. Yeah, I, I do too. I, I highly recommend this. is like a solid, like a solid four. Four, yeah, yeah. same. Four Z's out of five. And mm-hmm. so to me, I think... I, I, four this snaps. Is... <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to get. <laughs> Gotta... I know. I'm not good with my left hand. I got to do my right, but you get the gist. And so I think um, this is one of the better serial killer movies that I've seen in a yeah. while. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't think Summer 84 can would you? Really... So would you not pair this with 84? No, I would not. What would because you pair this 80, Because if anyone listened to our other, our other 84, to our 84 review, mm-hmm. they would know I fucking hated that movie. <laughs> so what I, would you pair this with? I would with pair them? this. The, so I would pair this with actually Mr. Brooks. Oh, interesting. Kevin Costner. Mm-hmm. Because not only... Because you would have... Because Clove Hitch is so grounded, yeah. right? And, and it's just so dreadful. And it's just it's built on atmosphere. And so you come into Mr. Brooks where it's all just like... This story just fucking snows balls out of control. Yeah. And you see this serial killer trying... And, this, and, share, and it shares the same themes mm-hmm. as... You know, Mr. As Brooks is trying to maintain his cover to protect his family. Yeah. You know, but also the in, the ele, ele, the uh, element. Yeah, the added element to mm-hmm. William Hurt being his dark passenger mm-hmm. is just all that more, you know, terrific. Yeah, and it shows that you know, for someone as meticulous as Brooks is, mm-hmm. there is someone over his shoulder saying, "Hey, don't do this. Don't, don't do, do this. that. Yeah. Burn those trophies. You know the <laughs> rules." Yeah, you know so. Yeah, I was trying to think of like other movies too. So, Al- how do you say it again? Alkalites? Acolytes. That one, and then I thought like Disturbia. Did you ever see Disturbia? Uh, so with Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That ha- kind of has a similar um, thing, and then also um, Dahmer with uh, Jeremy Renner. That Dahmer, the one that came out in the early two thousands, that kind of has a similar tone to this. Um, yeah, Summer of '84, just because. Like, both came out the same year. They both have their sus- suspicions of a serial killer of someone they know and their teens. But the summer, with Summer 84, though, like, they don't focus on the killer. I know. And then they drop the fucking ball on the killer. I know. And but I'm, it just That's has... the thing about it, though. It's like, I don't care about these fucking kids enough to, to know about their lives. Like, yeah, I cared more about this... In uh, Clove Hitch, I cared more about him because he is just like a he's like a an all do gooder kind of kid. Yeah, you know, so you do care for him um, a little bit more than those brats in Summer of '84. But yeah, I mean, all in all, I still think you could watch both. You know, whatever. Um, 
But I want I, I want more of these type of films, like independent serial killer movies. Looking forward to the um why am I drawing a blank right now? <laughs> Zach Efron's Ted oh, Bundy. Uh, wicked Something this way wicked comes or whatever it's called. Oh goddamn. Something evil wicked comes. Yes. Something like that. Why looking would they name to, it that way? <laughs> looking forward to that though. And a lot of people are giving hate on that because it's Zach Efron. Okay, but. the picture that uh that they're complaining about. They do realize that's from a fucking opposite side, right? Yeah, that's yeah. not from his right side. It's from his left side. I know. It was such a stupid thing to complain about. It's like, what yeah. the fuck? Like, dude, no, that's his, that's Zac Efron, the picture? Yeah. So they have a picture of Dahmer and Zac Efron, you Bundy. know. Bundy. Oh, Bundy, yeah. And so they have a picture side by side, and it's like, oh, look, they look like they look alike. But their hair part is not the same oh. side. <laughs> Yeah, because Efron's side is on his fucking right side and yeah. uh, Bundy's is on his left side. Yeah, it was such a stupid thing for people it's, to complain about. And you, know you can totally is, tell, too, by the fucking hair. You know what I think it is? I think because they're so used to Efron being, like, the buff comedic kid or high school musical. They're he, so used to that. He really needs to nail this role. And I hope he does. He I hope really- I'm not wrong and I hope I'm not let down. because I And then I backed up because Ross Lynch who was also a Disney or Nickelodeon star. And a singer. Did Dahmer. Yeah. Uh, my friend Dahmer. And he fucking nailed that. He was so good. That movie doesn't get enough credit, by the way. No, it doesn't. I would also maybe pair that with Clove Hitch, my friend Dahmer. Yeah. Yeah, that. it has that same tone. But so I'm like, hey, give Efron a chance. Like, maybe this is the movie that'll make him do dark or, you know, drama roles. I think with Efron is that his choice of... Uh, well, I don't even want to say a choice of movies, but he's been like typecasted in like dumb comedies, you know, know. In, in, in frat boy comedies and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, and being in Baywatch before this movie kind of didn't help him. Yeah, but you know, we'll see. Like, I'm hoping. I mean, I I am willing to give him a shot because yeah. it's always the least suspected actors that could always pull off an yeah. amazing role. Okay, he fled your Dark Knight. Yeah. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal in Nightcrawler. That you know, was for, so good. Yeah. You know, for instance, you know, to me, it's like it's the least suspected actors that yeah. you can think of that are going to be the ones that define that role. Yeah. So I, that's coming out this year. I think spring or uh, early I want to say fall. Oh, it's I, fall I, now? I, they push it back? I think what they're going to do, I don't think it's going to be a major release. Damn it. it I think it's going to be limited. Man, I've been waiting for this for a while, but... Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. So I, but that's like, there's not a lot of serial killer movies under the radar right now, um, that I can think of. So I want more of these types. Like these are my, these are my, these and like Home Invasion are like my favorite horror. Like at my age right now, <laughs> those are like the ones I really, really am all about these days. But yeah, highly recommend this one. Um, yeah, that's all I have bumping, to say. About. Bumping, bumping, and approve. Oh, for sure. For sure. All right. Yeah. We need to work on an emblem for that. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> we definitely need to work on an emblem so we can start posting like, bump a nine and approve. Yeah, I know. And uh, it needs like a sound effect, like a stamp or something, <sighs> like a notarized stamp. I don't know. Yeah. But... Uh, so that's it. That's our review on Clove Hitch. We think that it's really worth watching, and it's at a brisk hour and a half, mm-hmm. if that. You know, it doesn't even feel that it, long. It felt, yeah, it felt actually fast, like... Not too long. Like, before I knew, like, the movie was over, I was like, wait, what? I'm like, I wanted more. <laughs> I wanted more of his crazy scenes. But, yeah. So, that's it. Um, Tune in next week while uh, we do winter horror. Mm-hmm. And we're going to talk about horror movies that we want to watch, that we prefer to watch during winter. During winter, which is now, and it's freezing. Yeah, it's <laughs> fucking cold out here. But it could be worse. could be in Alaska. could be worse. <laughs> exactly. All right. Uh, I'm your host, The Boogeyman. And I'm your co-host, Ginger Snap. All right, for us, a bump in the night. Stay scary. Bye. Bye.